Hello, I'm Kelly Clement, documentary programmer for the 2021 Mill Valley Film Festival. And I want to thank all of our supporters for turning out for the festival in this very challenging year we find ourselves in. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce special guests, JR, the director of Paper and Glue, and Dallas Brennan Rexer, one of the producers, and Mark Azuli, another producer. And we are very honored to be screening your wonderful film at the Mill Valley Film Festival. Paper and Glue had its premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival earlier this year and has just begun its film festival journey. And I'm sure it's going to be invited to screen at many festivals around the country before it gets its theatrical release. Now, this is just so you know, to be honest, this is one of the first documentaries I programmed this year. And how could I not, since you have such a special connection to Northern California and our film festival, JR. We screened the marvelous Faces Places that you did with Agnes Varda in 2017. And just recently, we featured the wonderful short 1,000 Stories, The Making of a Mural that you did in San Francisco. Both were hugely popular with our audience. And now we have Paper and Glue, and it's one of the most powerful, thought-provoking documentaries I've seen this year, and one that is definitely guaranteed to generate a lot of discussion. So let's jump in. This was a very complex and layered work that obviously went through many different stages of production. And this, on one hand, is the story of your early work, and but it's also a look at some of your most recent installation projects. So at one point, did you begin putting this all together? Um, I think I've always documented uh, and uh, kept archives sometime. When I was really young, I don't really know why. Maybe because it was ephemeral and I knew it wouldn't stay, so that was keeping a trace. Uh, but I never knew really when it would make sense to gather all these and and, and to work on, a, on such a documentary that kind of cross-cut uh, images over 20 years. Uh, so it's almost like I've always been working on this without knowing it. Uh, and I guess the acceleration of projects in the recent years uh, and, and the scope of it, you know, made us realize, uh, okay, maybe there could be some that, you know, could be very interesting to dig in, like the prison, like Brazil, like um, to look back into uh, 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 you know, the projects in France. And so, uh, you know, it's, they, we could have chosen many more, you know, uh, uh, we had at some point to kind of focus on, on some like Mexico, but, um, but it's exciting because it shows a lot of the making of, and because it, there's always more chance for uh, the project to fail than to succeed. We never, there's never really crew following us. Uh, because other would draw too much attention. Other sometimes they're like, yeah, but is this show? Which date are you going to do it? We need to organize ourselves. And so because we never know how it would actually happen or if it will happen, often we ended up documenting it ourselves. Yeah. And how did you get involved, Dallas and Mark? How was your collaboration? Sure. Um, so I was lucky enough to uh, get a phone call from Dustin uh, in my office who said, I have a little project I want to pick your brain about. And then once we sat down and started talking about it, it was, it was honestly the, the biggest gift I could have received That's in right. part because I was working on this throughout the whole pandemic. And so at a time when everybody was locked in their homes and we were all kind of challenged to find our inner optimism and keep going, I would open these drives with these treasure troves of great stories and adventures and places. And you know, each day was, was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> so I feel like I got, I got a great, great special gift by just having this project fall in my lap. Yeah. And uh, as, as JR studio director for the past 10 years, I've followed every project and, and I started working very closely with Dallas. Uh, to provide all the archives, review everything, and try to uh, revisit all the projects to find what hadn't been said before and, uh, and bring, bring a new look to, to all of JR's projects we've done over the past 10 years and the one he had done before. Fantastic. What great collaborators, JR. Yeah, no, it's a great team, but you know, it's, uh, 
it, it, it was a good combination because with Mark, we're so much embedded in the projects that it was great to have, uh, you know, someone like Dallas and Keiko, the editor and the team and the producer to look and give an outside perspective on it because you take a project like Mexico, um, you know, Mark have filmed some of it and produced it on the ground also, and then also <laughs> produced on the movie. So it's good sometimes with so much in it that uh, it's great to give the rush and be like, you know, uh, have an outside eye to look at it and uh, and kind of cross cut uh, all the stuff that we live daily and sometimes we don't we don't even take the time to look back at the rushes. Uh, so it was really the first time we say, okay, uh, let's let's just dig in and look and you know at what we have in all those tapes that we've been taking for all those years. Oh, definitely. Now the whole Mexican wall installation has become so famous and has had such a profound effect on reaching people in this country and making them realize the human factor about the power of this border wall. And in fact, whenever I see pictures of it, I get a little teary eyed. Are, are you still in touch with any of the people there? Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, in a lot of our projects, we stay in touch with people, uh, uh, in Mexico, we're still in touch with Kikito and his mom. Uh, in the prison, a lot of the inmates are still calling me or Mark uh, on a regular basis. Actually, I just realized I saw my phone, a missed call, and like 15 minutes ago, and it was them. Um, and uh, so, and we're going back in two months, uh, finally, after this whole uh, COVID period, but we were able to talk uh, almost on a weekly basis with some of them. Uh, and, uh, and so in a lot of the places it's, you know, it's more than just an art project. And then we go to something else. It's a continuity, you know, in Brazil, we have this school. So we're in touch with the people constantly and we have to make decision on what, how the school, where it's going, what should we do? How should we transform it? And it's, it's fascinating. It, it, it really, uh, showed a power of art and, and the impact on the long term. And to see that all the guys that you've seen, uh, in the prison, in this documentary are now uh, in love three, which is like the one of the greatest upgrades you can have in a prison, going from level four to level three. And once them have freed since, you realize, oh wow, the, the, pro the impact had a huge, you know, the project had a huge impact on, on their lives and on the prison system there, even if it's just one prison, but the fact that it shows that when suddenly you show different light on some people, uh, it have that impact, you know, in, in real life, it, it gives us a lot of strength to continue and to push and to show the, the fact that art can break boundaries beyond our imagination. Oh, yes. Well, the editing is so wonderfully paced. And how did you work with the editor? And who the editor did a wonderful job of seamlessly going for, through so many different locations and time periods. Yeah, and Dallas, maybe you want to you wanna explain a bit? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Keiko Taguchi edited this film and, and she's phenomenal. She's she's really a, a special person and gave each each moment its due attention. And we she would watch it and rewatch it and think about it. And then I mean, we were looking at hundreds, if not thousands of hours of footage for this. There is a lot there is a lot there. And, um, you know, honestly, the hardest part was just figuring out which stories to tell because there were so many and and finding the way to go to go really deep with a couple as opposed to we could have you know we could have told stories for days um but she she was a really key part of the team and uh and i think that she also saw the metaphors in the certain moments and and was able to to kind of find a more a more poetic vision of where the film was going to so it wasn't just a literal biopic or it wasn't a it wasn't a story about who is JR and what is his art but it became a story about relationships and people and inspirations and optimism and and those those themes I think are what make it special yes definitely well in the opening scenes of the film when you're telling the story of the Mexican wall installation to the prisoners it was a very effective way to set up the prison art project itself now, how did you get access to that Supermax prison? How and how long is <laughs> the prison mural up for? You know, it's a funny story, and that that kind of resume often how project happens. Um, you know, uh, uh, it was 
on a Tuesday morning, we were about to open a show at uh, Brooklyn Museum. Uh, and, uh, and a friend of mine called me and said, hey, uh, Jab, would you ever consider doing something in a prison? You know, it could be a great idea. And I said, look, I, I, you know, I know that it's very complicated paperwork wise. We've tried in the past. We don't really have uh, enough team at the studio to do paperwork for months and negotiate with prisons and, and get a notarization to paste the small posters here and this and that. I'm like, you know, it's a great idea, but I don't think it's doable. And he kept insisting and insisting. And I was like, look, uh, you know, I, I would love to, but let's, it's, this is not the right time, of, you know, to, to talk about this. And he said, no, no, but what, what would you do? And so I could hang up because he was a good friend. I said, oh, I would paste the entire jail like I did the loop, I do the whole thing. And so I thought he would leave me alone for you know a while. And he hang up and he called the guy uh, called Scott who works a lot with prisons. And he said, no, I spoke to JR. He would love to do it. And said, all right, let, let me call the governor. And that guy called the governor of California, uh, <laughs> Gavin Newsom, and then said, you know, there's this artist called JR, he's from France. And he goes, wait, 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 what, what is this? What are you calling me about? It's, no, it's this artist, he wants to do a project in prison. I was like, well, what did you say his name was? It's JR, he said, oh, before I was a governor, I was in a mural that was at SF MoMA. And I was one of the 1,300 people in that mural. And I was interviewed in the street and I, I'm in there. And is that the same artist? And he said, yes, that's exactly the same one. And he said, oh my God, I love this process. Give him full clearance for all prison in California. Wow. And then my friend called me back two hours later and said, it's okay, you get a full clearance. I was like, wait, but I don't understand. You have a paper, do you have something? He's like, no, I have nothing. It's just the governor said, you can do it. And I didn't really believe it. So I sent two friends of mine uh, who lives in LA and who work with us uh, I, to go check one of the prison we scouted on Google Earth, you know? And then it happened to be a maximum security, but uh, you know, because th those are often the ones that are in concrete and I can paste on concrete. So it's pretty easy. It's just because of the architecture and the way the, you know, the fact that the glue, you can't paste on the grass, so have to be concrete. And they went there the next day and I thought that, that, you know, they'll see problems and they would you know, not be able to get in without this or that paper. And they told me, no, we actually went in and they let us do whatever we wanted. We could go on the roof and take photos. We could uh, send a drone, but it couldn't really fly because there's geofencing. And they say, you have to come, you know, we really have the permit for this. And so we flew there three days later and then we started the project. And that's the intro of the film where you see me walk in that room and meet all the inmates. I actually never been there and had no idea three days before we would work on this project. Yeah, that was fascinating to see you explaining the project to them and their expressions and see them change and get excited about it. Mm -hmm. And it was also really fascinating to see all the tattoo art work that was on all the prisoners as they sat and listened to you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Add on to that story. Uh, that was also the one of the first days we were filming with JR. And this was just sort of an example of, of how this project is a living, breathing organism that, that found its own path. And, uh, and so we were beginning to film with JR as he was installing the show at the Brooklyn Museum, which, which was a really big show. It was a, a very impressive retrospective of, of all of his work. And we had an, initially thought this might be something we could anchor the film in. And he gets a phone call I believe it was the day before the opening, <laughs> inviting him to the prison. And, and two days later, he's there. And, and, you know, Mark put this great team together and we're on the ground filming. But the path moves very quickly and you have to stay on your toes, but it is so worth it. Every, every surprise is amazing. Yeah. And you got a lot of cooperation. Go ahead, Mark. No, and, and to follow up on that tattoo art you were mentioning, uh, which was a bit frightening even sometime for us. Uh, we're, we're in touch with, with many of the inmates and some of which we remove some of the tattoos uh, and, and we hope to follow them and also document that later. So the, the whole point in all of these art projects, and you can see it well with the Brazil project, is that we bring continuity. So JR's art is anchored in a, in a, in a place and location with we go there once and, and have a, an art installation, but then the whole goal is to keep the ties with the community and keep working in, and that art can keep change uh, lives there in all the communities. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was to me, it was very significant when one of the inmates was so impressed that this was a rare case of Mexicans, whites, blacks, all working together within the prison. You know, are you still in touch with some of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely one of them, the guy with the swastika is coming out in November and we're going to uh, uh, go and see him in prison before he goes out and help him remove the tattoo as soon as he goes out because uh, it was really something he asked us from the beginning. And because of COVID, we couldn't make it happen inside the prison. So we'll do it outside. And so, uh, you know, we keep actually, we, we keep filming uh, this whole process because uh, uh, I feel it's just the beginning of, uh, of the journey in this prison. There's more to it. We started the school in there and we, uh, we have so much more to do. Uh, so to show really the, the different layers that can be, you know, passed uh, via art uh, in, in a place like that. Wow. Well, we don't have much time. This film was so rich. We could go on for an hour with this Q&A. But I just wanted to touch on the, the Brazil part of it. How long were you in Brazil? I mean, I guess you're still in Brazil off and on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're still back and forth. Uh, Mark was even living there for some years. Um, and he, that's actually how we started working. He, he uh, used to direct the school uh, there in Brazil uh, uh, before he jumped in and opened the studio in New York. But um, we're going there every year, sometimes twice a year. Uh, and uh, we, you know, we, the, the impact of the project on the community, but the impact of the school over the years uh, have been so you know, uh, strong that uh, it's one of the longest projects with the one in Paris, of course, but where we could observe and, and, and walk almost like a social and sociological, you know, walk of a very long period of time and to see the impact uh, there is, is incredible. And to see some kids that were like six or seven and now 17, you know, it's, it's, it's a big chunk of time to see the impact on people. Yeah. And all, so all in all, as you say, it's not about the art, it's about the people. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the journey we're in. That's why, you know, uh, we have a lot of WhatsApp group, let's put it this way, in our phones uh, to kind of stay in touch with everyone. But most of the time we just travel there, which is easier. Uh, even if like the last year have been a bit more complicated, we actually managed to to go and travel in, in quite a lot of places. Well, for my final question, what's ahead for you? What, what new projects are in the work? And this could well, probably go on for an hour. <laughs> no, because... Just like the prison project that we had no idea on the Tuesday that it would happen on the Saturday, we never know. There is some interesting project coming up, of course. There's one I can reveal because it's happening in a couple of weeks. It's in the Pyramid of Egypt in, in Kairos. Uh, I, I had the permission to do a project there, of course, not directly on the stones of the pyramid, but right in front. So I'm, I'm doing a giant optical illusion there. Uh, and But we have many other projects in Mexico this year also and uh, and the movie release in theaters in November so um, just for the next couple of months it's going to be a, a pretty intense period oh wow so how will paper and glue be available for others to see like people who have seen it tonight how do they tell their friends to go see this wonderful film so it is going to be released in theaters on, on November 12th in different cities across the U.S. Wonderful. And, and then in January, it will be broadcast on MSNBC wow. and streamed on Peacock afterwards. So, Well, this is an incredibly important film, and I hope more and more people get to see it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, JR and Dallas. And Thank Mark. you so much. Thank you. Thank you.